Hello everyone. Here we are. We have joined, and we would be learning what is integration and the methods of integration, like IDOX and proxy so proxy. So first of all, what integrate? What is integration? Why we require integration? What is meant by integration? So let's clear the concepts, basic concepts about integration. We as SAP people know what all data we have in our systems. But if we have to transfer the similar similar data to any third party application or within different SAP system, so we have to connect to uh, and send our data from, suppose we have a system called S4HANA system and we need to send it to some other system in which, which, is, which is based on Java or might be which is based on ECC 6, EHP 7, that's it, but they don't have HANA. So our data is not, we are onto different databases, we are not on the same database, but the two systems need to be having a similar kind of data. Whatever it is created in our S4 HANA, that should be reflected along with that to the other system also. The data should be available in S4 HANA. Along with that, it should be available in the other system as well. The other system can be anything. Again, reiterating it, it can be ECC system, it can be SAP system, or it can be another Java system, Microsoft system, anything. So this part of thing is called, this part of communication is called integration. When we are having SAP system as a core onto which we have to send our data, either send or we want to receive that data another from another system, it will be called as integration. In today's world, when we have multiple uh, objects, multiple vendors, multiple things, uh, application onto which we are supporting ERP systems, so integration becomes very important. This is the reason why integration came into picture and the data which we have in our SAP system, we either need to send it to other system or we need to keep uh, adapt or we need to get another system's data so and incorporate it in our SAP system. Coming on to first thing that is a very premium thing that is done for integration is called IDOCs. As an ABAP person, we know, uh, we need to know what IDOCs are, what are its part of IDOCs, and how to define, how to do a debug, how to, what are the transaction codes, what is partner profile. So there are multiple things which we should know about IDOCs. So starting with IDOCs, explanation of IDOC will be like, IDOCs are nothing but uh, its definition says it's an intermediate document. Intermediate document means we are putting up our data into a platform and that data is carried over to the other party. Once it is carried over to other party, either it can be successful in other party system or it can be not successful. All the recording, all the data that has gone and the status, whether it's successfully created or it's not successfully created, is stored in our system. This is what is an IDOC. I generally uh, tell people in a way of analogy that it's a small pigeon, a pigeon which picks up the letter and delivers it to the other person. So IDOC is that pigeon which will pick up your data written in a special format and it will travel around and deliver it to your another system. Now over there, it can be used and it can be modified. It can be as per their usage, they can use it. Now coming to the next point, why do we need IDOCs? We as an ABAPA, we all know that yes, system has other things apart from IDOC, which were told to us that they can be used for connecting to third-party applications. That is kind of BAPI. 
or we can use OData. We can use any uh, integration that's going on nowadays. But why do we prefer IDOCS? When we are talking about BAPI, in that we only consider it, suppose I work for a BAPI, I have a BAPI and I want it to be sent to a uh, Java system. I will call that BAPI, it will go successfully to that system. But we don't know whether it has successfully gone or it has not gone. Suppose if we, even if we know that it has been, there are few errors. Now again, how will I uh, recreate the same kind of data? I need to write a program again. I need to execute the BAPI again and then put the same data into it. I don't have anything kind of reprocessing and I don't have a status blog that can tell me whether this BAPI has, inter, uh, has been successful or not. So, these are small reasons because of which it becomes very hectic that if we keep on executing a program, how do we log our things, how do we, are, we check the thing. So the better way SAP introduced was an IDOC. IDOCs are intermediate documents that are stored in SAP systems from where it has been started. It stores the error, it stores the status, it stores the data that has been sent. So we have, suppose we create an IDOC and then we uh, get it as an error or as a success, whatever it be, but it will be in our system for a longer time. We can reproduce the same IDOC again, execute that, and we can expect it to reach to another system easily. This, this is what is an IDOC. I'll show you an example. If we see this, you can. Uh, this is an IDOC. This is an IDOC structure, which has what is its control structure, what is the IDOC number, what is the basic type, and everything. Then it also shows what is the data record under it. What all data have we sent? So this holds all the data. Then it also saves what is the status, in all, what all status it travels. It's not only success or failure, but it has status for data being, IDOC being generated properly, IDOC being sent to other system, and it has been integrated properly or not. In the end, it is either passed or failed, whether the execution happened or it didn't happen. That also comes here. So this is what is an IDOC. The last time we left our systems and we found that what an IDOC is. Going ahead in the same direction, how to define an IDOC, what IDOC is all about, and how do we characterize IDOC. Taking you ahead, I like to share my screen with you guys. Here, if you can see, I've written the R few IDOC things which we should be knowing. Terminology alongside what is the structure of IDOC. So IDOCs can be either inbound or outbound. Precisely speaking or just letting you uh, understand the concept of inbound and outbound is one we can receive and another way is we can send the IDOCs. If I have a purchase order created in my SAP system, and I want that to be sent to a vendor. One way is we will add that, we'll take the printout, we'll send it as complete details, we'll manually do it and send it to the vendor. The other way is if we have a connection between the systems, we can send what, as and when the purchase order is getting created in our SAP system, we can send the similar data, same uh, uh, purchase order to the vendor with the required details. This way of sending is called an outbound IDOC. SAP will trigger an outbound IDOC. The one which is receiving, if that end is an SAP system, again, it will be receiving that IDOC, then it becomes an inbound for them. So logically, inbound and outbound are the directions that determine whether we are sending the data or keeping SAP system in the main point, either the SAP system is the receiving end or at the 
sending it. If it is a sender, then that becomes an outbound IDOC. If it's a receiver, then the same IDOC will become a inbound for it. This is what is inbound and outbound. How do, why do um, I explaining about inbound and outbound is an IDOC categorically has three data. What are the importance of important features or important things which we should be knowing about an IDOC? IDOC has a control structure, it has a data structure, and it has a status structure. Control structure is the structure that determines who is the sender, who is the receiver, what kind of IDOC it is, what is the message type of it, what is the basic type of it, what kind of data it is sending, and is it, what is the status of this IDOC. Direction. Direction tells either it's outbound or inbound. Combining all this, control structure actually tells that these are the things. Now you have to either accept it or you have to either send it. Both the ways it can. It will have the control structure. Control structure is kind of a, uh, comparing it to uh, real life. We can say that you are an individual. As an individual, if you want, if anybody wants to know about you, or if you go somewhere, the person will be asked your nationality, your if you suppose you travel around the world, who you are means what is your nationality, where do you stay, what kind of work you do. So these are the parameters that determine you. Similarly, IDOC has a direction whether it's going out or it's coming in what kind of status it is in, what kind of message it is, what kind of uh, sender or receiver it is connected to. So these are the things which a control structure records in. The final status of IDOC is there in every IDOC, struct, IDOC control structure. Data records. Data records contains as segments which will have all the data that we need to send to other party or from uh, we expect the same data from other party in our system. Any of the data which is missing or any segment that is missing that will make the IDOC either it won't even be created or it will be ending in the error status. So these are the segments which have different fields in it these are the fields in it and the data for it as respective as required. Last and not the least is the status record. Status record is from starting to end what all have been status. The inbound status are with 51, 53, 54, 64, 62, 68 starting from 50. But the outbound IDOC is on the other side of these. It is 00, 02, 01, 03, 30. So less than, I think uh, less than 50 is your inbound uh, IDOC, is the outbound IDOC, and the one which are more than 50 are the outbound IDOCs. That is a simple way of identifying the direction as well. So the statuses also determine the what kind of IDOC it is. Okay, going ahead, as I last time also I uh, showed this T code, but I didn't open it from start, so let's do that this time. WE02 is a T code that shows us the repository of the IDOC. So we uh, can see the data by giving that. It's a simple uh, structure. It's a, a similar kind, the same simple IDOC, uh, IDOC report, report, which we have other SE38 reports. It's also an SE38 report, which can be transaction code is WE02, and we can check this. We have selection parameters, and we can get the, all the data along with it. Now you can see the IDOCs, because I didn't give any direction. So in the system, it had inbound also and the outbound also. 
inbound is which has which have come to it to this system those are inbound idocs and the ones which i have sent to other system those are outbound idocs suppose this math mask is there in inbound also and it's there in outbound also so the message type the one which determines what kind of data are you sending that is the message type all these field names written over here bat mass mat mass plant unit all these are your message types similarly in inbound id if i have an order if i have mat mass all these are message types mat mass represents a message type that determines that we are giving the material master information orders means we are giving the information for sales order so the control structure going in depth of what a control structure is message type direction idoc type and partner information direction as explained inbound and outbound either if we are receiving and at the sap or we are the sending of an sap idoc so that determines the direction as i just showed that message type message type is something that defines that this will be an idoc that is kind of sending this kind of data a specific kind of data suppose mat mask is a message type that displays that it will be sending material master data add mask is a message type that will be displaying an address master data so similarly customer master data and everything will have their specific message type if we are sending transactional data like orders or purchase or po order create one so all those are transaction data that trans travels between different systems partner information partner information means what are we who is the receiver who is the sender what port is being used to send the data is it via rsc function module or is it via edi or it is via file system so that is what determines the partner information partner information is very important to be understood and to be maintained properly if it is a rfc that will be used or function module rfc that will be used to transport or read the data then that uh, there should be an rfc between both the systems and it should be maintained in sm59 if it is a file system then the port that has to be used is a file state system it should be in the similar format that it can be read let's open an idoc so if you see this is the inbox inbound idoc the status is 56 the basic type or the message type is orders message type is orders means orders is the message type for creation of orders partner number partner type it's a logical system partner type it is representing that data so these are the major concepts of idoc in control structure now taking the same idoc number i can see the data in a table called edidc so if i check this idoc numbers sorry edidc and the idoc number over here is 7 this idoc number what is the standard date what is the control structure edidc is the table that stores the control structure of the idoc of each and every idoc it is the will store the record in edidc for as a control structure Thank you.